اسی قسم کی آپ تحقیقات کروانا چاہتے ہیں اس انسیڈنٹ میں کہ کوئی پاکستانی اس میں ملوث تھا ہم تیار ہیں اگر آپ کے پاس کوئی ایکشنبل انٹیلیجنس ہے کہ پاکستان انوالوڈ ہے وہ ہمیں دے میں آپ کو گارنٹی کرتا ہوں کہ ہم ایکشن لیں ڈسپائٹ پرائم منسٹر خان سنسیئر آفر ٹو انڈیا ٹو ہولڈ این انویسٹیگیشن آف پلوامہ انسیڈنٹ بہت بڑی قیمت ان کو چکانی پڑے گی دا ریڈیکل ہندو رژیم باؤ ٹو ٹیچ پاکستان ا لیسن پاکستان ریٹیلیٹ کرنے کا سوچے گا نہیں پاکستان ریٹیلیٹ کرے گا ان دا ارلی آورز آف 26 فیبروری ملٹیپل انڈین فارمیشنز کلوزڈ ان ایٹ ڈفرنٹ سیکٹرز The PAF's response was immediate. I am painting four high-speed aircraft near international border in Fazilka sector. The activity is also developing in South as well. Hot chambers for Fazilka sector. Copy, sir. Hot chambers, hot chambers, hot chambers. Divert cap or line of control. Once they met with Pakistani caps patrol, they could not have the courage to actually carry out what they thought they were actually going to carry out. The Mirage 2000s uh, fired the Spice 2000s standoff weapons, which overshot the target. With the Indian bomb standoff range of over 60 kilometers, they traversed over 50 kilometers and fell into a forested area. quite a distance from the apparent intended target and decimated nothing more than a few pine trees. It wasn't the conventional bombing that they had come over Balakot and bombed, in which case, of course, we could have intercepted them. Although there was no loss of lives and property on ground, the country's sovereignty had been violated. It seemed that Narendra Modi saw punitive action against Pakistan as his key to a landslide victory in the upcoming elections. How many Pakistan ke sari hekadi nikal? You know, in your bid to show Kashmir as a, as a counter-terrorism challenge while it is clearly an issue of self-determination under UN Charter and dates back to 1947, that you were willing to put the population, 1.2 billion people of this region, under the threat of a nuclear war. Inferiority complex, retarded Indian leadership, which is like a dinosaur, huge in size but mindless. Prime Minister summoned national security meeting the same morning. The response will come at the point and time of our choosing. There was consensus that the response had to be as measured and controlled as possible. The PAF, who was well prepared for a whole range of targeting options, was given the go-ahead by the country's Prime Minister. On the very next day, brief commenced early in the morning at an undisclosed air base. Since the mission purpose was essentially to demonstrate Pakistan's resolve and capability, the general area of bombing were the open spaces in military garrisons near the line of control. The aim of our today's mission is going to be 100% bombs on target, whereas sweep is going to ensure survival of our all strikes. It's going to be our top priority of the mission. At zero, 900 hours on the morning of 27th February 2019, fighter jets from different elite squadrons rolled down the runway. Within the next 24 hours, the Indian Air Force went on a high level of alert, but they were expecting the Pakistani Air Force to attack at night, but they didn't. They attacked during daylight hours. We approached on the morning, 9 o'clock, of uh, 27th February uh, and the attack came in the shape of uh, two Mirage 5 PAs armed with um, two H4 standoff weapons backed up by JF-17s with 1,000 pound range extension kits. Two Mirages along with JF-17s headed towards their respective pre-designated targets in Indian occupied Kashmir. The Pakistan should be on notice. All options are on the table. All options are on the table. They went off, the H4s were fired, and you can see the target designated box shift away from the intended target because now the pilot wants the bomb to hit about a thousand yards away. On that, I immediately unlocked the weapon and took it towards the right side to unpopulated area and the weapon impact the point which I have selected. 
The H4 bomb is about 2600 pounds in weight. So the TNT, the explosive is immense. The aim was not to go for a collateral damage, so we engaged that target slightly offset to show them that can engage any target at our own time of choosing and at our own will. PAF's ground strike had, meanwhile, rung alarms on the Indian air defense radars. Formation from PAF's fighter sweep was vectored towards two approaching IAF fighters. You've got to understand that the, uh, the communications between all the Indian Air Force aircraft would have been jammed. It must have been pretty difficult out there, up in the air, not knowing what was going on. After sampling the target data and confirming valid firing parameters, squadron leader Hassan fired air-to-air -air missile. SU-30 is not an ordinary aircraft. It is a multi-role, uh, you know, almost a fifth generation platform. Soon after the shootout, all hell broke loose in the Indian camp. They had everything that they had that particular day because they were expecting Pakistan Air Force to respond. After having bombed a part of our a piece of our uh, geography, they knew what the Pakistan Air Force was going to do to them in the next couple of days. An IAF MI-17 helicopter was scrambled for a search and rescue mission of downed Su-30 MKI. But in the chaos, it was taken for a hostile unmanned aerial vehicle by the Indian Air Defense Unit at Sirianagar, who fired a surface-to-air missile at it, leading to a case of horrific fratricide. And you have to ask yourself, why would an MI-17 be flying in the area? It appears to me and to many other commentators that that aircraft was there on a combat search and rescue mission to pick up the downed Su-30 pilots. In the ongoing fracas, the patrolling Indian formations dispersed. Five MiG-21 Bisons of number 51 Squadron were scrambled successively from Srinagar. The jamming aircraft, which did a superb job, absolute superb job jamming the communications of the, the Indian Air Force. Primarily, he couldn't hear the instructions from the ground controller at all. Before he could even get his bearings, Abinadan's MiG-21 was hit by a missile launched by Wing Commander Noman Ali Khan. Uh, it was uh, a planned execution kind of tactics we normally execute in our training. Copy kill, other one trailing by 10 miles, bugging out. It was day, where it became a dark night for them. They didn't know what I hit them. Having and been ejected, ultimately, the Pakistani army came along and, and took him away. <laughs> Military shot down two Indian jets today after they crossed Indian the disputed border in Kashmir. The military also says its warplanes carried out airstrikes inside India. The Air Force shot down a Sukhoi 30 MKI. Found on the news that the Pakistan Air Force shot down a MiG-21 Bison and an Su-30 MKI. So I remember being absolutely gobsmacked. Prime Minister Imran Khan announced his decision to repatriate Wing Commander Abinadan to India as a gesture of peace to de-escalate the tension between the two neighbors. As a peace gesture, it was an excellent gesture, very graceful, understandable. And it is a continuity of our history. A lot of our conquerors uh, they behaved in exactly the same way. It's simple, plain magnanimity. After that, the Indian government started lying brazenly. And you gave him credit for the F-16? Uh, that is his kill. He was the only guy there. <laughs> yeah, that With an R-73. Yeah, that, that is the weapon that he had selected. We have the uh, R-73 still attached to the motor rail, and it still has the thrust vectoring unit underneath. Uh, and this is the missile which many in India claim actually shot down the F-16, which, as we can see, is still here. 
The aerial engagement over Kashmir on 27 February 2019 not only confined growing Indian threats to Pakistan, but it also highlighted Kashmir issue unlike ever before, with more and more world leaders calling out for peaceful resolution of this dispute. of South Asia cannot be separated from the Kashmiri issue. Because I've heard so much about Kashmir. It's such a beautiful name. It's supposed to be such a beautiful part of the world, but right now there's just bombs all over the place. They say everywhere you go, you have bombs. It's a, it's a terrible situation. It's been going on for many years. All the heads of states are actually aware of the Kashmir issue today, and they understand the consequences if this goes wrong. Pakistan security forces are strong enough, are powerful enough, uh, to handle any sort of uh, situation. Two one zero. Twenty one to twenty three in the north. Twenty one.